My name is Ken Stingle and I'm the BC10 project manager. I've been associated with the project since uh, 2004. A BC10 is about 120 kilometers southeast of the city of Vitoria. It's in the northern Campos Basin. It's a relatively new area, not only for Shell, but for Petrobras as well. The water depth is about 2,000 meters. It is deepest at the Abalone Field. It's uh, ultra deep water. Uh, we've been deeper, but each time it comes with a new challenge. It's a relatively benign area uh, in terms of there's no hurricanes or monsoons, uh, but there is a constant swell in that area. And that constant swell is something that we had to incorporate into the design of the FPSO and into the risers and umbilicals to be able to overcome. BC-10 is a technically very challenging project. Uh, it's the first one that we've actually taken from the exploration phase all the way to the production phase in Brazil. It has a, a variety of different uh, reservoir properties, a small to medium sized reservoir, so not one big accumulation. Uh, we need to tie those together and make it an economic uh, proposition. We used an FPSO solution because we're 120 kilometers offshore uh, Brazil and we have a very uh, heavy oil regime. So we have heavy oil and has lots of uh, minerals in it. So we needed to be able to capture the hydrocarbons, store them, and then be able to transfer those to a ship where a tanker can come by and then take those and sell out at a refinery that can actually process those heavy oils. The, the FPSO is actually a 1975 vintage Japanese crude carrier that spent the first 20 years of its life carrying crude around the world. And then it actually was an FSO, which is a floating storage and offloading vessel offshore in Nigeria. And when we got it, it was in relatively bad shape. So we had to convert that vessel, we had to replace all the tanks, and for collision resistance, uh, since most of the new vessels are actually double hull, we decided to put what we call sponsons on, them, on the sides of it. So on the sides of the vessel, we have 13 sections of uh, impact resistant steel that go on the side, which essentially uh, duplicate what a double hulled vessel looks like nowadays. This is one of the deepest uh, FPSOs in terms of water depth anywhere in the world. At 1,780 meters, uh, it's, a, it's an extremely uh, deep water development. On the subsea infrastructure, again, we had to combine the subsea pumping and artificial lift system. That's an absolute first. It's the first full field development where we're using subsea separation and artificial lift to optimize the production and uh, ultimate recovery from the reservoirs. The subsea system uh, is all around flow assurance. How can we produce the hydrocarbons and how can we keep them flowing without them freezing, without having wax precipitation problems, and how can we boost the pressure? So we need to boost what nature normally offers us. So instead of having an uh, aquifer support that pushes the oil through the rock, so we need to be able to pump that uh, hydrocarbons up to the surface. But the pumps themselves are not very efficient when you have gas fractions in the oil and in the water. So you want to be able to separate the liquids from the gas and then you could have the gas free flow back naturally up to the, up to the FPSO and then you can pump just the, the liquids themselves. And that's the most efficient use of the pumps that we have. We had up to 5,000 people working on the project on any given day during the execution phase, primarily in Singapore where we had around 3,000 people at our peak uh, fabricating the top sides, installing the top sides, and commissioning all of the hull systems. So a huge team, a global team. We had people in Brazil. We had people all over the world working on the project. So one of the big challenges was trying to coordinate all these activities across a 24-hour time zone. In the United States, we manufactured the electrical submersible pumps and we fabricated the umbilicals. In Europe, we fabricated the tubes for the umbilicals themselves. In Colombia, we fabricated the copper cores that went inside the umbilicals. We actually moved our team, our FPSO team, from the United States to Monaco, where they stayed for one year to do the detailed design work, and then took that same team and moved them over to Singapore, where they were there for the fabrication and commissioning of the FPSO themselves. The execution of BC-10 on time and on budget really proves to the world and everyone in Brazil that we should be, or we can be, the preferred operator.